In this tutorial video, I'll be showing you how to install Ubuntu onto Raspberry Pi and how to do the initial setup. So why would you want to use Ubuntu instead of Raspbian? Well, is it easier to use? No. Raspbian has a nice script on there on setting a lot of the parameters of the Raspberry Pi and resizing the image. No, Ubuntu doesn't have that. More choice of desktops, maybe? Well, on the Ubuntu Pi Flavor Maker website, we do have the choice between, well, the server, which has no desktop, and Ubuntu, Zubuntu, and Ubuntu Mate. So yeah, potentially we have more choice of desktops. Long-term support? Well, probably not a whole lot of difference, really, between Debian and the Ubuntu long-term support releases. Although whether this is going to be a three-year or five-year, um, then actually that does push you in favour of being Debian. So really, not many good reasons. But maybe it's the same reason why you'd want to use Debian on a desktop instead of Ubuntu. Because you can and you have the choice. So I've gone onto the download page and you get a list of the images we can use here. So you've got the server minimal, standard, Ubuntu, Zubuntu and Ubuntu Mate. So I've gone for the Ubuntu Mate image this time. And I've got a few instructions here on making the micro SD card images. I've got 8 gig SD card image here. Now for some reason I bought a class 4 and the recommendation is the class 6 or class 10 which are a bit faster. So they're saying use DD Rescue or the GNOME Disk Utility. Well, I've traditionally used DD or Disk Destroyer. The alternative on Windows is to use the Win32 Disk Imager and I have used that before and it didn't work the first time but the second time it did. So, your choice there. If you're using Windows, that's going to be your method. But on Linux, I'm going to use DD. Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi is only compatible with Model 2 and Model 3 Pi. So I've got the image here in my download folder. So I can right click on it and do extract, extract here. Uh, that's the alternative of using unxz so to uncompress it. So I'm not doing it all through the command line. Now I'm checking in the KD Partition Manager, which is the micro SD card. So that'll be slash dev slash sdf in my case, which is a 7.4 gig image. Now if you're using DD, you have to be absolutely certain which is the USB drive and which are the hard drives. You don't want to overwrite a hard drive because it will be gone. So slash dev slash sdf. Might be slash dev slash sdb if you've only got one hard drive on your system. But I have quite a few hard drives on my system. So I'm bringing up the list of files with ls. Uh, that's the one I want right there. So the command is sudo dd if equals the image file and I press tab to autocomplete. of equals slash dev slash sdf or the drive that you're writing to. bs equals 4 capital M. Byte size equals 4 meg. Now I have to wait a little while for that to complete. Here's what DD looks like upon completion. So it tells you how much data was copied and the rate it was copied as. Now that's a realistic rate, but if it's coming out as uh, hundreds or thousands of megabytes a second, that is unrealistic and has failed. So it turned out the 8 gig micro SD card I was using to write an 8 gig image on wasn't big enough. So I've had to use a 64 gig image. At this point, you can insert the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. The Ubuntu Mate system has a nice graphical installer to it where you can set your username, the machine name, and later on when you boot up the system, you get the welcome screen and use a built-in tool to resize the partition. That is simple enough and I'm going to disregard that for this video and focus more on the Ubuntu server, which doesn't have these nice easy to use features. So I've turned on the Ubuntu server system and I'm going to SSH into it. Let's get rid of the SSH folder and make it reset all the keys. So that's better now. So I'm going to SSH onto the device with the username Ubuntu. So it's Ubuntu at and the IP of the device. And the password is Ubuntu. So firstly I want to resize the image. So sudo fdisk slash dev slash mmcblk0. Ubuntu. Command D for delete. Partition number 2. 
Now to recreate it. That's new, n for new, primary, p, partition number 2. Then press enter and enter. Then write w. Yes, OK, we have the warning here. So reboot the Pi, a sudo reboot. Now let's just H back into it. sudo resize 2fs slash dev slash mmcblk0p2. You can press tab to auto complete. Right, done. df slash h and that confirms the partition size has now increased. Let's make a new user account. So for me, sudo add user quids. Give yourself a new password. Full name, quids, room number, no, 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 no. Yes, everything is correct. Done. Now I want to give it the same privileges or groups that the Ubuntu user has. Let's check that first. That's cat slash etc slash group and grep Ubuntu. So the command sudo user mod quids dash capital G. So I'm going for sudo audio video plug dev users input and ADM. Yeah, even that's a bit overkill. To be honest, sudo users and ADM would do the job for a headless system, but for a desktop you would need audio and video as well. Let's switch user to it, so su quids, your password, and I'll test out the sudo abilities, so sudo echo high. And that works, so I have sudo writes. Now I want to change the host name from Ubuntu standards to something else. So that's sudo nano slash etc slash host name. Feel free to substitute nano for your favorite text editor. Test.quidsup.net, that'll do. Control X, Y, yes. Now to change the etc slash hosts file. So that's sudo nano slash etc slash hosts. So type it in here. So I type in the system name without the domain on there, then press tab and then type in the system name with the domain. That'll do, control X, Y, enter. Now sudo reboot. Now if all being well, when I SSH back into it, and I don't need to use the Ubuntu user anymore. So SSH. So if all being well, yes, the system name has changed. My user account has changed and I can remove the old Ubuntu user. sudo user del ubuntu. And there you go. That was how to install Ubuntu onto a Raspberry Pi. Now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.